Never in my life have I seen anything more beautiful and cute as my darling beloved Molly. I was so lucky to have her. I would go nuts when I see a cavalier in a book, magazine, calendar, TV, movie, or on the street. I would sing love songs about my puppy to her, or when I'm writing my bike or working on my projects. When I walked Molly, I would tell her how much I loved her. How beautiful she is. I would tell her that she is the most cutest thing in the world. I loved my Molly more than anything. She is my treasure. My forever love. I would tell Molly that she is the most beautiful being in the universe. That nothing is more cuter or beautiful than her. I love Molly more than the times the sun has shone on earth. I love Molly more than the number of stars, the number of dust that makes up the sky, and the number of grains that makes up the dirts of our planet. Molly was born on June 10, I think in 2007. We've had her for a good almost 17 years, lucky we were. She was chosen by my parents out of a litter, and they chose the cutest of the bunch. That's my Molly, the cutest of the litter, the most adorable creature in the world. My brother's ex-wife's parents had a litter of cavaliers, and my parents went to them to adopt one of their puppies, and they picked Molly, the cutest of the litter. I was so surprised when she came to the house, I never thought I was a dog person until I met Molly. I was always a cat person, gothic, an eccentric artist, and particular to cats. But when Molly came in the house, it was love at first sight, I adored her, and she won me over. I become a dog person the minute Molly stepped in my life. I freaked out in a good way, I was so mesmerized by her cuteness. I loved the pattern of her fur, it was like an art masterpiece to me. I loved how she was covered in her fur, the way it was her mane, it was like a fashion designer outfit to me. Everything about her spoke regality, nobility, for being a cavalier King Charles Spaniel, she was an aristocrat's puppy, a king and queen's puppy. And how I needed her in my life. It was 2008, I think, when we adopted Molly, and times were changing. I wanted to be ready for the change and live the life of my dreams. But the thing is, the world can't give you the life of your dreams all the time, but love is the life of dreams. Loving Molly is the life of my dreams. The world doesn't hand the life of my dreams on a silver platter, even if I try my very hardest to earn it, but loving Molly is the life of my dreams, and yes she was handed to me on a silver platter by a loving family. I was living a nightmare of deaf discrimination in most of my life. I needed my break from deaf discrimination. I needed rewards for my hard work. I was barely rewarded for hard work because of deaf discrimination. So I screamed hateful insults at my enemies in my room, when I was alone, raging at my memories of deaf discrimination. The problem was, all my memories were just memories of deaf discrimination. There was not one good memory I had in my life of no deaf discrimination. Each and every path and page and chapter of my life was all about being judged for being deaf. So when Molly entered my life, she showed me love. The world hated me for being deaf, and I was hating the world back. I didn't know love until I met my Molly, and she brought out love in me. She showed me what love was, because I loved her. She was beauty, and I was the beast. She tamed the monster in me, and turned me from a frog to a prince. I loved Molly as if I were clinging to life, clinging to love. As if my loving her was taking me out of a dark place, out of a danger. As if loving Molly was taking me out of death to life. I needed to love her, for sustenance, for survival. Because the world hated me so much for being deaf, I had no one to love but my darling puppy. She wasn't just a puppy. She wasn't just a cavalier King Charles Spaniel, but the cutest of them all, not just the cutest of the litter, or the cutest of cavaliers, or the cutest of the dogs, but the cutest of all the creatures on earth. There was nothing I loved more than to see her smile, to make her happy. I just loved having her by my side. I was never a dog person and didn't pay much attention to dogs until I met Molly and she won me over. Loving Molly was taking me out a dark place, away from an inner hell, to a paradise, to heaven. Her smile was so radiant and shining, there was nothing like it in the world. 
It was hard to photograph her when she was little, because she was so animated. Even a photograph doesn't always capture those moments when you see incredible beauty radiating from her. I felt that loving Molly was taking me away from a horrible place, and that I had to love her to cling to life, for my soul to survive. I felt that I had to hold her and love her in order to get out of being a bad person, to be a good one. That I had to get out of a dying, hateful person, to a living, loving one. In fact, I hated deaf discrimination, and those who judged me for being deaf. My emotions were really unstable, and my dissatisfaction with deaf discrimination was exceeding at intense levels, that I couldn't control myself and I had murderous ideations about those who judged me for being deaf and did bad things to me for being deaf. I hated them and wanted to kill them. But I understand that these feelings are not unique to me, but are inherent in all humans. I had to learn to manage my emotions, and Molly helped me with that, she was like, a therapy dog for me. So, my loving Molly took me out of that evil, dark place, to a better one. She loved me in a world where everyone hated me for being deaf. I had no one other than love, but my Molly. And how lucky I was, because Molly is the most beautiful creature in the universe. I have never in my life have seen anything so beautiful as my little puppy. I believe God made her just for loving. That her purpose in life was to be loved and to be adorable and cute. I just couldn't believe how cute and adorable she was. I woke up in the mornings looking forward to my Molly, to feed her and to walk her. I would walk her after breakfast for her morning walk. I would tell her how much I loved her and call her all kinds of cute names while walking her during the entire walk. Aren't you the most cutest little princess that ever lived? I'd say. You are, you are. When the walk was finished, he would turn her head and smile the most adorable smile I've ever seen. I loved walking her. It was my daily duty. Usually, three walks was the norm, but sometimes if she needed more, I would do it more, like, six, or even ten walks, as much as she wanted. My time spent with Molly was the best time of my life. Strange though, when I think of my time I spent with Molly, how much I would have rather have spent more time with her, even though, I had things to work on, like my career, art projects, marital arts, so I guess I couldn't devote my entire day to her, and that's okay. Life is all about balance. But I wanted my life to be perfect with Molly. I know I had problems in life, and I didn't want those problems to trickle in my life with Molly. I wish I could make my life perfect to share with Molly, but I realize that Molly is giving me therapy to get me through my problems, not to solve them. Molly signified me probably the most important time in my life, from 2007 to 2017, there was the Cosplay Cons, a new era. It was a time of anime and cosplay, and a time for changes and new seasons. It was time for love, but I've never found love in this world outside of Molly. That's okay, I guess, because that's just the way the world works, I guess. People only love money and people with money. They don't love intelligence, philosophy, charm, wit, or creativity. They just want to consume what mainstream media tells them to consume. They're brainwashed. Loving my Molly can heal me, heal me out of brainwashing, out of mental abuse, psychological operations, emotional instability, etc. I felt that Molly is the most precious treasure there is. That I would rather have her than a Lamborghini. She enriched my life in ways more than any material possession could. She is a living treasure, created by a divine being, God. Her value is worth more than anything to me. One could love an inanimate object, like a sports car, but it won't love you back. Molly's love was incredible. When I touch her, I felt healing powers emanating from her. She wasn't just a dog that was being playful and wanting food all the time, but her love was real, true love. I felt as if the more I loved her, it was her loving me back. You can't really love a sports car, or other material object, you can just enjoy them, but a cavalier like Molly you can truly love. And that's what's important, is because love fulfills one's purpose of being, of creation, of being created by a divine being, is to love, because love is energy, love is life and life is love, and to love Molly, created by God, honors him, and shows him respect for his creation and gives him tribute.
Molly's purpose in the universe isn't on some food chain or ecological chain, but simply to be loved, to beloved. Love my cavaliers, says the Lord thy God. Love my puppies, says the Lord thy God. I believe that Molly is a love letter from God, that Molly is kisses from God. That she is in the form of a kiss from God. It's not necessarily that God appears in human form and kisses with his lips, but he has other ways of sending out that message, and Molly is that message. Life is short, and sacred, and my time I spent with Molly was sacred, a special time, and the best time of my life. There is nothing better in my life than loving my Molly. She is the best thing that happened to me. When I leave the house riding my bike I would sing love songs about Molly, as well as sing them to her every day. I would see Molly in my mind everywhere. When I come back home she is outside, waiting for me on the front lawn, she knows when I am coming by the house and gets Mimi to open the door for her so she can sit out there and wait for me. My life with Molly of 16 years may seem substantial, but once it's over, it's gone fast. How time passes like sand through the fingers. How we go through life like fools to let it all pass by. Molly taught me how valuable love is, she taught me love, how to love in a world of hate, where the world hated me, but Molly loved me. Taking me out of the darkness, there's an eternal universe in love. Love conquers all, they say. As Molly is kisses from God, she is a message from God, and that speaks more than any material object. I can just imagine, back in the days of medieval times and forthwith, aristocracy had paintings of their families or children with their cavalier puppies, and they didn't have TV or all the entertainments we do today. I'm sure that the children spent all day long playing and cuddling with their cavalier puppies for endless hours. There is a language in love, they tell stories we don't know, but learn. We may be entertained by stories on TV, but our world is encoding hate in our perception languages, love is hidden, obscured by the hate machine media's language. Loving Molly was decoding love, revealing it, into my world, into the world. Loving Molly is a connection to life, to the love force in the universe. People blindly lash through the world in a constant flux of misunderstanding everyone and everything and believing assumptions and lies at rapid speeds. But love is truth, and loving Molly was revealing truth, keeping me afloat in a sea of lies. Love is a treasure that money cannot buy. I would tell Molly, every fiber of my being loves Molly. My cells, my strands of hair, my blood, my being, they all say, I love little Molly. I love my little puppy Molly. God put Molly in my life. My loving Molly is true love, a love that will last forever. She is my forever love. She is my eternal love sister, 